Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of BPL TV. I'm Liam Mucklow, with me as always, Micah Gibbs. And you know, today we're gonna give you a little bit of a peek under the hood as we're getting started diving down what I think is gonna be a really deep rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Now, Micah, we got, uh, we got a Cat9 with this uh, like crazy cable coming out the back yeah. end of it. I got a dynamometer mm -hmm. here and you got a laptop, like what's going on? What are we looking at? <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, so <laughs> what we're looking at now is how the player interacts with the bat from a grip standpoint. Yeah, and not so much, you know, we'll get a lot of information as to how the hands are actually placed on the bat, but we're going to start to, to do a dive into how does the player actually apply force to the handle, right? So what parts of the hand and what parts of the handle and at what point in the swing is the player applying the, the pressure that causes the torque force that actually moves the bat? Right. So... Well, I guess start like what's out there right now. I mean, we you know we did a little bit of a search to see what information we could find. We don't want to be redundant, so right. what's out there? Well, in, in baseball, there's always been kind of this notion that grip is super important, right? And we believe that it is. It's like golf; it's right. all in the grip. Yeah, <laughs> but it just depends on what exactly we're looking at at grip. Is it the amount of force you can? Is it the amount of grip strength you have? Right. Is it the way you're applying that grip pressure? What is it? And that's what I think we're going to find out that's going to be super important because a lot of people think that just the harder I can squeeze, the faster I can swing a bat. Right. So let's let's go through some of the common thoughts out there mm -hmm. right now. So um, is are both hands supposed to apply even, even force on the grip at all times? Is one supposed to be doing one thing, one does another? Yeah. What are people? Well, what think, are the coaches saying to yeah, the players? Yeah, so I think just like in golf, like what you were mentioning, the, the grip styles are a little different. So you're going to yeah. get some players. You're going to get some players that will overlap. They'll overlap a pretty good bit sometimes. Oh, really? In yeah, baseball? you'll get some guys. Yeah, like I know uh, John Carlos Stanton. He'll overlap a pretty decent bit. He can hit it pretty hard, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. One, 121 so last think, night. Like, kind of like with golf, the, the longer that your hands are, the further your hands are away from the ball, longer the shaft, that kind of thing, the more force and speed we can... If you've got the power apply, to right? manage it. If you yeah. can, yeah. So for, for sure. him, it's more about he was trying to create as much of that as possible because that's now I, i've seen we're going to look at some videos here but I, i've seen some pretty cool freeze frames of guys hitting home runs and their their top hand isn't even on the bat right so is that is that like i've heard some crazy things where the announcers go oh my god look at the control he took his hand off the bat to slow the bat down and hit the ball like, right or some people are saying look how hot or how uh juice the baseballs are because this guy doesn't even have his top hand on the bat and the ball's still going over the fence. All right, let's tell you, let, let's let's roll a couple different videos here. So this is a little sample from our MLB bat fitter certification. Dr. Sasha McKenzie from St. Francis Xavier University up in Canada has put together a bunch of bat physics. Got a couple great videos here. So just, I mean, when we look at this, Micah, talk me through, you know, kind of what we're seeing, phantom camera stuff yep. here on TV. Yeah, so a couple different things. You're seeing a guy that's making pretty much perfect sweet spot contact mm -hmm. and then you have an, uh, another player that's obviously getting jammed you can see the bat vibrating kind of pushing back into his hands and that was one of the other things we always thought with grip was the more grip pressure or more grip strength that we had the more we could kind of get more I guess get a little bit more out of the non-optimal contact right so that was about the extent of information I'd been able to find you know I think subjective based was you know, when I when I strike the ball, you know, in that low vibration sweet spot, my grip strength doesn't matter. But right. when I have off center hit, grip strength is going to help. Yeah. I guess help deliver a little more energy to the ball. Right. That was always the kind of perception. I know if you talk to any baseball player when they hit one in that perfect sweet spot, it's like oh, I didn't even feel didn't it. Didn't even feel it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, we're in the lab a couple of days ago. You know getting a couple numbers and stuff, going through some things with Sasha. What, uh, how was that morning? <laughs> oh, not my favorite, not my favorite. My whole uh, baseball career was pretty much centered around how strong a grip can I have. And right. every time I was in the weight room, it always finished with a pretty extensive grip session because I always was under the impression that grip strength mattered for bat speed, power, and like we were talking about, suboptimal contact. Right, I, mean, I think it definitely matters for power. I mean, grip mm -hmm. strength is a hugely important thing, so we don't want to take anything away from it. But what was interesting is, 
you know, if we analyze the time that the ball is actually in contact with the barrel, that's about 1.5 milliseconds, right? Um, and then it takes about one millisecond for that impulse to get down to the hands. So there's no time. Right. Right. There's just, there's just, not you enough. know, another, there's just not enough time for it to matter. So already that's been one, you know, pretty interesting thing. Yep. Let's get, uh, I'll tell you what, let's go, before we dive into sh giving you a sneak peek at some of the technology that we're going to be used to do this, let me talk through, what, what the heck is this guy? So this is a diamond dynamometer. Okay. So we use this in the lab to measure grip strength, both yeah. dominant and non-dominant hands. Go ahead. Let's yeah, uh, it's all powered on here. So every every player, every youth player that comes to see us in Baton Rouge and every MLB player that we go out on the road to work with, this is part of our standard operating procedure where yeah. we're also we're not only gonna understand things about their entire hand length, finger length, palm length, palm width, but we're also gonna go through and we've been building a pretty sizable mm -hmm. database of grip strength. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. What, yeah. do we, what do we got there? Oh, oh sorry. Off. There we go. So then go ahead and squeeze for a couple seconds, sitting down. You got about 64 kilos. Yeah, so you get, uh, right, so he's able to put 64 kilos through there. Yeah. Now I am going to uh, proceed to embarrass myself yeah. here. All right, Let's see if I get any knuckles pop. Ooh. There's a couple there. Here, a couple. Look at that. I didn't reset it, so I also have 63.9 <laughs> kilograms. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That matters because yeah. when we do go through, go through and take a look at it, we do see, um, you know, a, a bit of a correlation between high grip strength and high bat speed. Right. Right. So we need to know that. It gives us an idea. Of what is the ceiling for the player? Mm -hmm. And now let's uh, let's give everyone a sneak peek. Yeah at this guy so i'll tell you what let's kick it let's kick it into live mode here first okay there we go so right here you can yep. see these crazy lines so when i squeeze here with the bottom hand you can see that red circle go to 100 100 percent of the pressure is being exerted by the left hand and you can see that really go up and down on the graph right and if i go with the top hand you can see here if I squeeze with both hands equally, I can end up in the middle at 50-50. So this pressure-sensitive pressure technology comes to us from Sensor Edge. We're working with them to basically try and learn. Um, and let's go ahead, let's get the, uh, the, the pixel square. This is all pretty neat prototype stuff here. So now as I'm down here, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, there I'm squeezing with just the pinky finger, and you see those very two bottom pixels light up, right? And as I work my way up the bat, you can see we can get a bit of a representation also of which finger and on what side of the bat is it being applied. All right, so that's how we're able to measure this. And of course, we're using all of our normal stuff, our dual force plates from Swing Catalyst, Rapsodo launch monitors, uh, motion capture either from AMM or from K-Motion. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some captures. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you know, as always, we're trying to bring benefit to the coaching community to help players get better faster. So for this particular one, uh, we're going to throw my technique under the bus because I, I'm just not a baseball player. I'm a pretty experienced rotary athlete, but not so much with this thing since I was 13 years old. So, yeah, Micah, why don't you go through and start to do a little bit of a decode of mm -hmm. what we see here on my swing? Yeah, so if we're looking at this graph, what we see, like Liam was showing earlier, that green... Uh, the green line is going to be the top hand. So what we see is that top hand, what we would call in baseball a rollover, where that right hand really takes over and dominates. So when, when we're seeing, right, we see this a lot when golfers come to baseball, baseball players go to golf. Baseball players are always taught to keep that, that lead, uh, the lead hand with the, uh, the back of the hand up and the right hand with the palm up and driving that for as long right. as possible. When I go to do that in golf, I'm gonna get a pretty significant slice. But, and so right here we take a look at so that vertical line shows us where we're at in time you can see the bats on its final approach down to the ball and yeah we've got a massive right hand pressure spike so right. I'm we know absolutely unequivocally this is what I'm doing and it, what's pretty neat about this is if I even get in right here right I can I can really see this stuff lighting up so I I can tell that it's really coming from from these three fingers because it's towards the bottom section yeah. of the right hand portion of that grip. And uh, like most rollovers, kind of just 
I loaded it down into right. the ground. Yep. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of uh, a little bit of information helped change perception. When perception changes, behavior can change. When behavior changes, results change. So what the heck was happening in here? Yeah. So on this one, we kind of had the cue of. Uh, pulling the bottom hand and pushing the top hand, kind of almost creating like a little torque couple. Right. Which so I'll when, let you explain a little further. Right. right. So when I, when I got here, it was, you know, to when it comes time to hit the ball, feel as though I can pull the left hand back away and, you know, have the right hand continue to push forward. Right. Without so, completely rolling it over, of course. Right. So it was like the left hand balances out what the right hand was doing. Right. And when we look at, you know, the torque applied on a bat, one of the most important things is this mid-hand connection, this spot right here. And so if, if we're rotating about this, then the farther away from that mid-hand connection that I apply a torque force this way and a torque force this way, the greater the resultant net torque that will be applied on the bat. And you can kind yeah, of so as, see that yep. I was able to do that. Yep. And as we see, if we keep going frame by frame, we can see how he gets, this is right as he's approaching contact and we're right at about that 50-50 mark. So we can see how he's, and if we look at the pixels as well, we can see how we get some red throughout the hands. Yeah, so this red stuff down here, that's that left hand pulling back this way. Yep. And the red part up here is the right hand pushing forward. And what I like about that is there you know, fairly far away from that mid-hand connection. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do we know if this is good? Not yet. No chance. Right. right? We got we got a lot of work to do there yet. Uh, but you know, this is kind of the rabbit hole we're going to be diving down. And yep. some of the initial observations, yeah, like when I would have my best hits as a low skill player, and when Micah would have his best hits as a high skill player, we saw a lot of variance in the graph. On approach, um, but as soon as we got to the point where it was time to, you know, essentially release the barrel to the ball, we kept seeing this normalization of 50-50. Right. So we don't know if that's going to continue as we test through elite and sub elite athletes, but that's find what we're going to find out. Yeah. So be sure to tune in next time as we keep going down this rabbit hole.